Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Sorin and today I will show you how to build a powerful 5V UPS that can deliver a stable output of 25 amps and even more if needed. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. For this project I need a good quality PCB because the circuit will work with a very high current. PCBWay is a professional printed circuit board manufacturer with more than a decade of experience in providing high quality products. They provided the PCBs for this project. More about this in a minute. A few months ago I made this 5V mini UPS. It's small and compact, but it has a stable output of only 0.8 amps and peak currents of up to 1 amp. Then I received a few requests to make a more powerful 5V UPS. So I made this schematic, which is similar to my older 5V UPS, but it has some improvements. These are the components I will use for this project. Let's start with the PCBs. To receive them you need to go to the PCBWay website, log into your account, go to quote now, quick order PCB and upload the Gerbil file. Now you can choose the color of the PCBs, check the other details and save to cart. I chose a faster shipping method and in only a few days I got the package. The PCBs look very good. Now I will solder the components according to the schematic. It's recommended to start with the smaller components, so the resistor goes first. Then we have some small diodes and to solder the charging module more easily I added some pin headers. For this powerful UPS I will use components that can handle a higher current, for example this 10 amps Schottky diode. To charge the battery I will use a TP4056 module but not with a micro USB port because it will get very hot with 2 amps or more. I'm going to use this USB type C module because it can handle 3 amps without getting hot. Let me show you what I mean. This is a 2 meters long micro USB cable with pretty good quality. I will connect it between a 5 volts power source and my load tester which I will set to 1 amp. So with a 1 amp constant current load there is a voltage drop of 0.8 volts. This is a big power loss for a 5 volts device. Let's compare it with a shorter USB type C cable. I will set the load to 1 amp again. There is still a voltage drop but much smaller, 360 millivolts. With a 3 amps load the micro USB cable has a voltage drop of about 1.5 volts, which is a lot. Let's recap. A long micro USB cable wastes a lot of power. You need a shorter USB type C cable. There is also a small voltage drop on the wires and contacts inside the power supply, which I realize now I need to improve, but in a future video. I'll get back to soldering the components, if my assistant will allow me. The TP4056 module I'm using doesn't have battery protection. A simple LED will indicate when the UPS runs on mains power. It's not mandatory, but it will help if you're confused. What the hell just happened? Let me check the UPS. Oh, there is a power outage. Good thing I have the LED. Hey look, the power is back on again. My older UPS has a 2 amps relay, but now I will use a more powerful 10 amps relay. Two capacitors will try to keep the voltage stable while the relay is switching between the charger and the battery. But on this UPS one capacitor will be connected on the step up converter input and the second one on the converter output. With a charging current of 1 amp the TP4056 IC will get very hot, especially in a closed box. So I will stick a small heatsink on it using thermal adhesive. Up to this point the circuit is similar to my other UPS. I used more powerful components but this is not enough to deliver 2.5 amps. And now comes la pièce de résistance. You can see that there is one final component missing here, diode number 4. When the mains power is interrupted there will be a short delay until the relay switches to battery backup. During this short time the load may turn off. So what does this diode do? 
When the converter doesn't receive power from the charger and the input voltage drops, this diode will temporarily deliver power from the battery to the converter at a lower voltage until the relay connects the battery directly to the converter input. So no matter how short or long the switching time will be, this diode will provide some power to the converter during that time. When mains power is present from the two diodes, only the highest voltage will power the converter. So it's important that the voltage coming out of diode number 4 is lower than the voltage coming from the main diode. Remember that there will be some power losses in the main cables and connectors. And because diodes allow current to flow in one direction only, the battery will not be affected. The circuit board is finished, so I thought. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see more DIY videos and updates about my future projects, please check out my Patreon page. I need a powerful step-up converter with a low voltage input. I will test it with my variable power supply, which will simulate the battery pack. Most lithium-ion cells have a nominal voltage between 3.6 and 3.7 volts. First, I will set the output voltage to 5.1 volts. USB devices need between 4.8 volts and 5.2 volts. To set the current, I will connect these ceramic resistors to the converter output, and I will set the maximum current to 2.5 amps. Let's test the output of the converter. I will set the current consumption to 2.5 amps. The voltage is fine. For this output power, it draws an average of 4.7 amps from the battery. And if I try to increase the load, the voltage drops, because the maximum output current is set to 2.5 amps. I will put all the components in this plastic case. But first I need to remove some of the plastic standoffs. These are real shrapnel, so use protective goggles. The circuit board will sit in the front. I need two cutouts for the USB connectors. I will start with my small and useless rotary tool, but this is taking too long, I can feel my nose hair turning whiter. I need something more powerful. There we go. I'll use a cutter to smooth out the edges. And I need one more cutout for the on-off switch. The circuit board fits very well. These metal standoffs will be used to fix the modules to the bottom of the plastic case. They are easy to install. After I marked and drilled the holes, I just tightened them with small M3 screws. For this project I will use short 1.5mm wires, because I want to keep the power losses at minimum. I measured and prepared the wires for soldering. But why did I use such a big switch? This one can handle up to 10 amps. Is that really important? Let's see. This is my old UPS with a full battery. I will add a 1 amp load and measure the voltage, starting from the battery terminals, 4.12 volts. But after the fuse it measures 3.90 something volts, so the voltage dropped a bit. After the switch 3.73 volts and after the relay, which is right at the input of the step-up converter, 3.66 volts. So even with a full battery, the converter is getting only 3.66 volts. This is a total voltage drop of 0.43 volts from the battery to the converter. That's a lot of battery wasted. Fast forward a couple minutes into the future and we compare it with the new and improved UPS. From the battery to the converter, the voltage drop is only 0.12 volts. So using components with a higher current rating will result in lower power losses. But when finished, the final product will also be bigger. So in the end it depends on what you really need. But I digress. Let's finish this UPS. I also removed the connectors from the converter and I will solder some short wires directly to the board to avoid any imperfect connections. Now I can just tighten the boards with M3 screws and solder the wires between the boards. I think I also need a battery for this project, right? I have some old recovered lithium-ion cells here. These should be good enough for this project, but I need to test them first. So I gave these cells a few charge and discharge cycles at 700 milliamps 
and they reveal a real capacity of 2.5 amp hours. The insulation rings are damaged, so I will replace them with new ones. I need some plastic holders to make a battery pack with 6 cells. This is a 1S 6P battery pack, so the cells will be connected in parallel, using 0.12 by 8 mm nickel strips and my DIY spot welder. I will make a lot of welding points because the UPS may draw a lot of current from the battery pack and I want good contact points. The battery pack is finished, I insulated the nickel strips with Kepton tape. It has a total capacity of 15 amp hours. But if you need a bigger capacity, there is room inside the UPS for 8 cells and if you use these 3 amp hours lithium ion cells, it will have a total capacity of 24 amp hours. This is a small protection board for the battery, it can handle maximum 7.5 amps, but you can find different versions depending on your load. After I solder the wires to the battery protection board, I will insulate it with heat shrink tube. The battery pack will be fixed in position with strong double sided foam tape. I will use this small digital voltmeter to monitor the battery voltage instead of a simple battery level indicator. There are some M3 screws on the bottom panel, so it needs some silicone pads. But I will remove the cover for the rest of the video, so I can check the components. I thought the UPS is finished, but after a few unsuccessful tests, I made two more modifications. The TP4056 module has a programmable resistor with a default value of 1.2 kilo ohms for a charging current of 1 amp. I will decrease the charging current to 0.54 amps by replacing it with a 2.2 kilo ohms resistor, because I want to test the UPS with a 2.5 amps load. And if the battery is charged with 1 amp in the same time, it will put too much stress on the charger and USB connectors. And there is one more problem. This shunt resistor between the USB positive pin and the positive input of the module. It has a resistance of uh, R400 0 0.4 ohms. So between the USB connector and the rest of the circuit, there is a voltage drop of 0.68 volts with a 1 amp load. That's just nasty. So I removed this resistor and replaced it with a short thick wire. Finally it's time to test the UPS. I will use this 3 amps charger. The battery is charging and together with the rest of the UPS circuit it's using 540 milliamps from the charger. My load tester is connected to the USB output. I will slowly increase the load now. With a 1.5 amps load it draws 2.32 amps from the charger, but I want to go higher. 3 amps from the charger, that's the limit, for a 2 amps load. Now you can see why I lowered the charging current. So you need to split the current from the USB charger between charging the battery and powering the load. But I will continue to test the UPS in extreme conditions to be sure that it works and it's safe. So I will increase the load to 2.1 amps while the battery is still being charged. The rated power of the charger is now exceeded. And I will simulate a power outage. The output of the UPS is stable it can switch to battery backup back to mains again without any problems. Let's increase the load to 2.2 amps and cut the power. The output voltage drops, so no good. But what if the battery doesn't need any more current? The blue LED on the TP4056 module indicates that the battery is fully charged now. Only the UPS circuit draws 90 milliamps from the charger. Now I can increase the load to 2.5 amps but the current draw from the charger exceeded 3 amps again. I need a better charger and I will also increase the output current above 2.5 amps. 2.6 amps, the output of the UPS is stable. The diode that covers the switching delay time does a very good job even with a very high current. Let's try the light bulb test with 2.5 amps, with the USB charger it doesn't work. But with the power supply it's fine, the light bulb doesn't flicker at all. 
So if you have a load bigger than 2 amps or if you want a higher charging current, you need a good power supply and I suggest you solder the wires directly to the UPS circuit board. USB connectors and cables get hot with more than 3 amps. What about the UPS autonomy? The battery is fully charged. I will measure it with a 1 amp load first. After 3.5 hours I checked the temperature of the step up converter and it's cold. And after 8 hours and 13 minutes the UPS turns off. I will test the autonomy again with a 1.5 amps load. This time I added a digital thermometer to the converter and you can see that it's not very hot. But with a bigger load in a closed enclosure it will definitely need some venting holes. The battery doesn't heat up because the current draw is divided by 6 cells. The backup time for 1.5 amps is 5.5 hours but like I said you can add a bigger battery. This video is getting way too long so let's pick up the pace a bit. The over discharge protection kicks in when the battery voltage gets to 2.44 volts. That's dangerously low for lithium ion cells. But you're a grown ass man, don't let it get that low. Charging the UPS if it gets completely discharged, 16 hours with 1 amp and about 29 hours with 0.54 amps. The charging time may seem long, but safety is more important. You can also use it as a power bank if needed, of course. In the video description you will find links to all the components including the Gerber file to order the PCBs from PCBWay. And if you enjoyed this video please like, share and leave a comment below. Bye!